Good morning and welcome to Community Conversations. I am Queen Miss Ebony J and you're listening and watching 1230 The Buzz, your talk station, 101.1 The Wiz and 100.3 Cincy's R&B station. I'm super excited to be here today and I'm joined with an amazing group of women who support and advocate for those that are in need autism and we is the name of the organization and i have in here with me the co-chair kashana harper hey beautiful hey ebony thank you for having us we also have with us anita larkins um larkin walton who is the co-chair hey how are you i'm good how are you wonderful we have the treasure, Miss Risha here. Hey, beautiful Risha Young. Hello, how are you? And then is this Wylea Larkins? Yeah. Yes. Commu- communication Secretary, how you doing, beautiful? <laughs> hey, how are you? I love it. We all came on as a family, and, 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 and it's a true representation of what you all have going on over, the, over there. So just in case nobody has ne- ever heard of your organization, talk to us about Autism and We. What it is that you all do and tell us who you serve. Well, Autism and We is a collaboration of clinicians, parents, caregivers, teachers, uh, just anyone that represents the autism community that is interested in advocating. Um, We set out to be the voice of the black and brown community uh, because we are basically often forgotten, sometimes underrepresented. And so our major goal is to make sure that our children are having a voice and that there is someone there standing up for their rights and obtaining resources and making parents aware of what what's out there for them and getting a seat at the table to change some things that need to be changed. Oh yes, you know, there's so much that goes on. Um, I was just talking to a parent the other day. You know, just because our babies are autistic does not mean they don't have rights. They still have rights, they still have feelings, they still have needs. And it's super important that we stand up for them, that we advocate for them, and that we care. Because if we don't, then they, how they feel just gets tossed to the side. Well, Ebony, we came together because of an, a study that was done by Dr. Karen Burkett, a nurse practitioner of children. Uh, she followed a crew of African-American parents and children just to see how those children were developing. And she actually was comparing them to their white counterparts. And what she found was there were a lot of of disparities between services, information, and things that were just being given to our counterparts that were not reaching uh, the segment of our community. And what happened was during a luncheon, the families came together and they were sharing stories, uh, their aches, their pains, their trials, the whole nine yards. And so a core group of us decided we need to keep this going and we need to start taking on some of these challenges. And that's basically how the group was born. Wow. Cultural differences as well. Um, because she also noticed that our children thrived a little bit more when it came to independency. And she was trying to figure out what was the difference between the family dynamics. Um, And it was a wonderful journey. Um, Me and my daughter participated for almost three years. It was like the best. It was something I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, And I'm very glad that that study happened because it allowed autism to be born. I love it. So our goals with Autism and We is to make sure that we not only support each other, but we're providing each other with resources so that way true support can happen through change. Exactly, Ebony. And and just making sure that we're empowering families. Our big thing is to empower you with the tools that you need to do what you need to do to advocate for your child. So my sister has autism. 
and um, growing up, they were diagnosing everybody with autism, right? So then later on, we learned that she had Rett syndrome. Well, what I hate about when we get to learn about what's going on or they, they diagnose our child or children with something new, you just get this big, thick packet that you get sent home with. And it's telling you all of this stuff. And it's like, well, what, what, what is going on? What am I supposed to do with this information? <laughs> How do you all help parents in that regard to understand and truly like what it means? Because we watch videos. I mean, my mom was at the library. We were doing everything we could to understand the difference, but it's so hard to interpret it. Well, that's why our support groups on Thursdays is very important. We have families that come in that say, you know, we have new, newly diagnosed families, which means that they got that big packet. I remember when my kids, my twins were diagnosed. I remember that big pack. And so we have families um, that come in on our support group on Thursdays that they've gotten that packet or they've gotten that diagnosis and they're like, so what am I supposed to do? Right. Uh, and we help them navigate through that. You know, it, it can't be fixed in one one session, but we, we give them supports. We, we, we let them know it's okay first. Mm -hmm. First, we, we, we tell them that, hey, Let's take the limitations off of your child. We're not gonna let this diagnosis define who your child is destined to be. So yeah. we, we give them hope first and let them know this is just a diagnosis. Your child can do whatever and we're gonna give you the resources and we're gonna be there to support you along the way. So we help them filter out what they can use now, what can be, now we, we have our disclaimer we're not the pro, we're not the professionals, but I'm gonna let Miss Anita take that over. Hmm. Um, we are not quote unquote all there in a professional capacity. What we do, we call it peer to peer mentoring, and it helps the moms, the dads, brothers, sisters, because basically, if one person in that house has autism, everyone in that family has autism. And so Correct. the general ideal is that we, one, have created this safe space for you to really voice your fears, um, meet with some people who have had the same fears. And what we've learned is as we are teaching them to advocate, we're also empowering them because they're finding that their story now helps another person's story mm -hmm. and that story. And so it's an each one teach one situation. And there, everyone has something to give, even those that came in and thought, I have absolutely nothing, I'm distraught, I'm panicked. They find when they start sharing, they too have a part of that journey that will help someone else along the way. And that is the real mission and why we have such a love for this project. Yeah, it's, it's very important to know that your story helps someone that gives life, you know, and it gives understanding it, it, that sense of community. Our stories is what connects us to each other. So we make sure that we let them know that, hey, even 17 years into this game, because my twins are 17, I'm experiencing different things now. So there's going to be something okay. else you're going to come to us and talk about. We're going to we're going to talk about transitioning into adulthood. So there's we're, we're all in different stages and we mm -hmm. all have different levels. So, you know, we, we talk about all these different things. We might have a child that's nonverbal. We might have a child that's twice exceptional. But yeah. we talk about all those different things and just those stories are what connect us and, and allow us to support other families. And Tell me this. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, beautiful. You can I, add. <laughs> I think that's what makes us unique is because we all have been um, in different spaces. Um, her twins are 17. My daughter is 20. She'll be 20 in August. So just the journey from three years old from diagnosis to now his his change drastically. Um, oh yeah. Each the each stage is different. You know, three to eight, I was like, oh, I'm rocking it. She turned nine. I was like, Jesus, I don't know what I'm doing. And and, and then different programs change. Then they age out of different things. 
And so it's great to have a diverse group of women that have had different stages or children at different ages, because it truly does give them hope and let them know that, hey, you have somebody that's been there, done that, here's the resources, don't stress out. Risha, did you want to add anything? I saw you took your your your, your um camera off mute. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say my daughter's thirteen, and what I love so much about the group is I can come to these ladies like, hey, I'm struggling with this, you know, or I just need prayer today, and they're all there, you know. I had a mom come to call me yesterday and told me that they were going impatient. What do she need to do? So me and her talked, me and her prayed. And now she's there. And I told her, just seeing her from when she first came to now, how much growth she's done and how strong she is, Mm -hmm. and that we're all here if she needs us. And that's the most important thing about our group is supporting each other. And we not only support our new members, we support each other daily. Yes, daily. It's hard. Um, when me when me and Miss Kashana was talking, I was talking to her. I'm like, cause I'm like, I'm 30. I'll be 32 next week, and my sister's about to turn. Well, she just turned 35. So, like you said, that five age five all the way to now, watching her grow has been off the chain. And you get those different <laughs> levels of this year she's a a great angel, and these years it's a World War Three. You okay. know, right? It goes down. Let's be clear. I understand what you mean, right? But it can be hard because, you know, most of your parents, you know, when a kid goes 18, then they have a new life that they can look forward to. Mm -hmm. Um, But when your kid goes 18 or 21, because my sister went to school all the way to 21, you know, then it's like, well, now what? What do we do? How do I get to have my vacation time? What if I want to go on some dates to go out with my girls? You know, I feel like parents, people don't see that part and that side. Um, because my mom didn't have a lot of friends for a very long time. She was home with us. We were priority. Um, and I think that that's a big thing that you all, as parents, face. You can be alone a lot because you're alone with your child. And you want to have a good partner, Lord, prayerfully. You have a great companion that can be there to help you do it. Because other than that, it's just, it's all on you. Yeah. That, that is so true. That's so true for so many of us. Even when you having a child with any diagnosis is is hard on a family, Um, especially even when you have a spouse, you can have the best spouse. But Mm. let me tell you, it impacts a marriage because I think the last time we went on vacation, I can actually tell you we went on vacation in 2013 as a family. But then we started to have, you know, one of my twins started to have more significant behaviors. So then we have to, now my husband and I have always worked opposite shifts. So how do you build, you know, it's hard to build a marriage, you know? So um, yeah, it it, it impacts, it impacts the family. And, and, but what we do, we let, we, we, we let um, families, when we have these support groups, we let parents tell how they feel. It's like, be honest, this is a safe space. It's okay to say, we give you permission to say, look, I'm mad I can't go on vacation. I wanna go on vacation. This is natural. But but that's why we really teach you how to build a community around you. And so in this group, we, this is like, okay, we're your community. Let's, let's, let's find some more people to add to your community. Because we all know that just because you have family, it doesn't mean you have family right. to be there when you got a child with a disability because not everybody is equipped for this game. Mm-mm. And I'm just, I'll just keep it that as real as it can be. And sometimes you're, and we tell people your family is not always your blood. That's so right. When you're building this community, your family, that it's not going to always be your blood. You're going to find people. Um, I built a great relationship with a person that was. Um, actually providing care for my son during a summer camp turned out to be one of the best people that I could ever have in my life. I, yeah. I call her my adopted daughter now. Um, and, and so it's just just building that com- that community everywhere you meet. I mean, meeting these young ladies was just amazing for us. Um, I remember Risha and I, we came on like a year later. About a year later. In, and we walked into the meeting and I, I knew Risha 
from, we were on another group on a family advisory council together, but we actually knew each other because our oldest, um, my oldest daughter and her oldest son went to grade school together. So we reconnected, um, but we walked in and I was like, oh man, this is amazing. We actually have some somewhere for us that people actually understand and yes. they're going through the same thing we're going through. So that's where you start building that community, making that, you know, that foundation. So yeah, community is important. I'm constantly amazed with the things that are birthed out of this group. We've been at it since 2017. And not only have we been able to build this community of women, but we have been able to impact the family. So we also have, with our Thursday night, we have our support calls every week from seven to eight. Uh, we also now have a group called Mom Talks that is in conjunction with an awesome young lady, Taylor Singleton and her mom. They own a gym called We Rock the Spectrum. Okay. And it, we are in collaboration and we come together and the moms have their moment and we talk face to face and continue to build that community and that support. Um, from that, it, it, it began to grow and we now have what we call autism and we the men's edition. Oh. Um, under the leadership of Chris Rogers and Dr. Charles Collins, and they got together, went online, and we found out the men had a great need. Their first time out of the gate, there were 18 men online, and we've gotten feedback, so they're now meeting monthly on the second week. So we and we also do education and training. We when we say teaching to be advocates, we are reaching out to people like, like Eric Metzger, Sean Bostic, uh, Dirk from the from Hamilton County DDS. We've got Celia Schlomer. We have a host of very knowledgeable people that bring things to the table. So we are training, equipping, and empowering. And so we stay very excited about that. Um, We've got Dr. Jean Anthony, Dr. Karen Burkett are on the line with us. So you can always get a point of view from a clinician, yes. a educator, Shauna. Krishana will never tell you everything she does, but she is our one man band. She's got her fingers in everything. When it comes to knowing and documenting issues and things that are going on, Risha has it down. Uh, yes. While Leah loves to spend time in everybody's chat rooms and find out and get the pulse of the community. So we just bring all that together. And because of them, autism and we, that we mean something. And it's become a very strong entity. And we hope to create a lot of change. I love it. We have about 30 seconds left before we go. And I hope everybody has learned the value of this organization. Tell us how we can join and become a member today. Shana. Okay, so if you go to our, our website, autismandweed.org, you can find out all the information you know. We have our, go under our events page. We have our support groups listed there for our Zoom calls. And then we have uh, monthly meetings every fourth Saturday of the month for anyone that would just like to come and spectate and sit back and learn. And then, like I said, jump in on those calls on um, the support group calls on Thursdays. And the weekly meetings, can we attend if we're not a member? Yes, you can. It's open to any and everyone, all people, men, women, siblings, anyone who's been affected or want to get guidance or information. So, yes. Autismandweed.com. Make sure you head on over to the website. Ladies, keep doing what you are doing. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out to me. I am super excited and so grateful that we have an organization like yours out here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Ebony is dot org. Dot org. Oh, not dot com. Yeah. and we dot org. Okay. Don't type in com. You're not going to get the information. <laughs> right. You won't, you, won't, you won't find us. You won't find us. Yeah, it's dot org. <laughs>
autismandweave.org. Please log on and become a member today. This is 1230 The Buzz, your talk station, 101.1 The Wiz and 100.3 Cincy's R&B station. Stick around for more community conversations after these messages. <laughs> 